So good day, everybody. Welcome to another um, session in our series of the movement patterns and primitive reflexes. Today we're going to be introducing the homologous pattern and with the Babkin reflex. So just as a recap, we started off the series looking at the withdrawal reflex or the fear paralysis. Then we moved on into the breathing movement pattern with the Moro reflex. And then we looked at the mouthing pattern with the rooting, sucking, and swallowing reflexes. And then we spent quite a bit of time in the spinal movement pattern, looking at the tonic labyrinthine, spinal gallant, spinal perez, and head writing reflexes. Today, we are going to look at the homologous movement pattern, um, and we're going to focus on the Babkin reflex. The homologous movement pattern. So essentially, the homologous movement pattern is when you are moving um, with the two hands and the two feet. So as you can see, you're pushing with both hands, pushing with both feet, um, jumping, using your arms, and legs at the same time. My understanding of the, homolo the homologous movement pattern comes from my mentor, Carolyn Erickson, and her work with her movement exploration courses. So basically, it's a symmetrical movement of um, both the arms um, or both legs at the same time, both flexion and extension. So you can be pushing or you can be pulling. Young children use this as they're developing um, as a means to build a strong grounded base for movement on all four limbs and um, learning to move beyond their personal space. So before we were talking about movement being initiated from the spine or the center when we were in the spinal uh, movement phase, but now movement is being initiated through the arms and the legs. Um, so we're away from the spine. Um, the babies actually start this when they're in the womb as they're learning to push against the um, uterine wall with their feet, um, maybe with their hands. Um, uh, through the homologous pattern, children can uh, learn to lift themselves off the ground. Um, as this pattern develops, it supports and stimulates the development of the limbic system, which is that emotional center of the brain. The ability to move out into space leads to the development of relationships. And as the children learns to reach during this stage, the stimulation and support of the neocortex begins. So this uh, movement pattern establishes lateral stability, so the stability of the sides of the body and bilateral midline focus of the mouth and hands um, it is the first pattern of locomotion started by the arms and then the legs. It provides the opportunity to feel fully grounded and children learn to push back into the sitting position and it helps balance muscle tone on the front and then on the back of the body. So let's see here. My computer wants to work. Okay, so the Babkin um, reflex is a reflex that is active at birth, and it actually helps um, to support the baby to suck. So there are midwives out there that who are familiar with the Babkin reflex. So what we'll see is when the palms are stimulated, then the baby will want to suck. Okay, so as you can see, as the when the palms are stimulated, then the baby's mouth opens and closes. So it's um, for children, for, for babies who are having trouble nursing, midwives will st um, start to stimulate the palms. So if you have really, really tiny, tiny babies, you can do that, stimulate the palms and see. And what happens is... Um, the um, when we'll look in a second, but when this is unintegrated, we still have um, when the hands are stimulated, um, the mouth has sensation, or um, in severe cases, uh, 
um, even older children might even start to suck or want to chew things. So we'll look at that in a minute. So the babkin starts to develop about the ninth week in utero. It should be active up to about three months after birth. This reflex influences the development of the homologous movement through bilateral hand mouth mortal coordination. So the head moving down to the chest, the mouth opening when both palms are stimulated. This reflex is the basis for the palm mouth coordination system. So it allows babies to later discover their mouth, bringing the um, objects up to their mouth. So this reflex needs to be mature in order to support the development of the tongue, speech, and communication. It also helps to form the sensory motor system, and it allows the exploration of the midline and body sides, thus helping to develop homolateral movement as well, with activation of one palm and, turn, and the turn of the head, exploring the awareness of the body sides and uh, the body sides, and leading to the formation of the brain dominance. And it plays a role in eating reflexes such as sucking, chewing, swallowing, and biting, and in the developmental facial expressions. If unintegrated, um, the child can have difficulty nursing, have habitual hunger and food allergies, um, inappropriately eating with his hands, messy eating, thumb sucking and nail biting, difficulty with fine motor skills, speech and stuttering, difficulty with gross motor skills, involuntary movement of the mouth and tongue while reading, difficulty with fine motor tasks such as writing, and hypersensitivity um, in the palms and um, in the palms of the hands. So what are some things that can be done to help integrate the Babkin reflex? So um, we need to do a lot of stimulation of the palms because that is what is triggering the reflex in the first place. We want to do a lot of uh, stimulation because that is how it gets integrated. So exercises such as the wheelbarrow is um, really good because the whole hand has to be flat on the floor. And if you're on the carpet in different textures also that provides additional stimulation. Um, they can be riding on their scooter on the stomach and pulling with their hands. So um, it, not with the fingertips. So if they do that, you have to say the hands have to be flat on the ground when they're moving themselves. Um, they, you can be, they can stimulate their own palms or you can stimulate them, um, you know, with your thumb or if they're doing it themselves, then one hand, one thumb is, uh, is stimulating the hand and they can switch and they can um, do that while they're sucking. So as they're stimulating their hands, they can be um, acting like they're sucking on a, like a lollipop and then they can open their hands up really wide and they can open their mouth up at the same time and then they can say, ah. So they stick out their tongue and go, ah. Okay, as their hands are open and their mouth are open so they can stimulate and suck, 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 and then they can swallow and then they can open their mouth, stick out their tongue and say ah. And they can get tactile stimulation in whenever you can. So if your child is little, you're kind of watching TV or you're playing a game or whatever you're doing. Um, a lot of times my child, when he was younger, about five, he didn't, even at five years old, he didn't like me to hold his hand. Um, so I had to sneak in a lot of stimulation, um, not just in the hands, but in, um, I mean, for him, it was an, he had like a lot of different issues of tactile stimulation. Um, so if your child is experiencing this with the Babkin, it's probably not their only issue. But um, if you can just um, sneak in a lot of touch on the hand, a lot of touch on um, anywhere where they're sensitive, on their neck and their back, um, just kind of when they're not thinking. So if they're really engrossed in watching TV, which sometimes, um, you know, we don't like them to watch a lot of TV, but if they're facing and they're watching TV, then they can um, uh, maybe be a little entertained so they're not noticing as much, but their body's going to notice. So just put in as much um, uh, tactile stimulation, and over time, then you'll start to notice. I mean, I was really surprised after a while he let me hold his hand when we were walking down the street, which was he never used to do. So, um, you know, little blessings, I guess. Um, if you want to learn more about how to integrate this and other reflexes, um, Bloomberg Rhythmic Movement Training Level 1 will be um, what you're interested in. So, um, 
and um, also you should be interested in our membership site. Um, so if you're interested in taking um, Bloomberg Rhythmic Movement Training, um, well, it's supposed to say Bloomberg Rhythmic Movement Training, sorry, um, please go to my website, wholechildlearningandwellness.com, and you can um, follow the tab that says Courses. Or actually, if you can contact me, the link to um, uh, to purchase, um, right now there's not a course set. So if you're interested in a course, if you're interested in sponsoring a course, you have some other moms in your area or other teachers or therapists who are interested, then just let me know and um, and then we and then you can just contact me and we can arrange something. Um, otherwise, you go to the tab. It depends on when you're listening to this video. You can go to the tab and see if there is a course already um, scheduled, and then you can um, uh, follow the instructions to register. Um, I do live in Lehigh, Utah, so any course that I'm scheduling is in my area. If you would like a course in your area, just contact me and that can be arranged. Um, also, my membership site has information on um, different reflexes and what you can do to integrate them, um, as well as other, um, you know, a bunch of other information. So if you go to Whole Child Learning and Wellness and find the Members Area tab and follow those directions to um, join our membership site. Okay, so the next video we will still be on the homologous movement pattern as we look um, at the STNR or the symmetrical tonic neck reflex.